one of the hardest chapters is the second because the first chapter you can set up all these these examples and you know these these um, these scenes and situations um, in an intriguing way, but then you have to get on with the um, the nuts and bolts of the story. And I think the, the the hard part for me is trying to continue that throughout the, the whole story, making sure you don't you don't let go. I mean, the first crime novel that I actually read um, it was the the Big Sleep. Um, and until that point, I think I'd always, I mean, I'm, I'm going back to when I was, when I was a kid. Uh, until that point, I was sort of, crime novels being sort of, the, you know, the, the murder in the drawing room. And the sort of like the old English sort of thing, and then a bit dusty and fusty, and I, I wasn't too bothered about it. And I read, you know, Raymond Chandler, and suddenly it was like this fantastic dialogue. It was, you know, it was snappy. Um, and there was um, a, a, a character who was telling the story, a first person narrator, who you actually became involved with, and became, you know, it was, it was a, a, underneath it all, he was quite a sensitive, sensitive character. David Hunter is a, the, the, is a, the character in uh, my, my series of novels I've written about him. The, the first one was The Chemistry of Death. Um, and he's a, he's a, a British forensic anthropologist. Um, and I've done, I've written four novels before, prior to Stone Bruises, Darth. Um, and I think it wasn't an easy step to break away from that because everybody was expecting the fifth one. Uh, and I was expecting to write it. Um, but you can't sit down and try and guess in advance, well, people will like this, they will like that. It's, it's a case of getting an idea for a story and then telling it in, a, in as compelling a way as you can um, and then hoping that people will like it. And as to deciding which, which idea you, 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 you choose, in a way it chooses itself because, as, as happened with, with Stone Bruises, um, or De Hoff, that was the that was the story I was getting the most ideas for, um, and they were, you know I, I kept writing them down, thinking, okay, I'll come back to that later, and then one idea leads to another, and before you know it, you're in the process of writing a book, even though you're wanting to write another one. Going back to it now, I find that you know, the ideas are coming more freely again, and I'm I'm glad getting you know it's I've had a break from it, and I know my character David Hunter very well now, um, and I can yeah I'm I'm glad to get back to it. If, you, if you're stuck on something, if you come to a difficult point, the, the instinct is to keep working at it and working at it and working at it. And quite often the best thing to do is to think, OK, and do something completely different. And then your mind processes it and, and suddenly the, you know, the solution will, will come to you while you're doing something else. Sometimes, as you say, just going for a walk, getting away from it, you, you need to do that. Um, go for a swim, just to you know, clear your head. So it, it varies. I, I, I wish I could say I got... Um, a set method of you know, resolving these things, but I think it's you know even now after you know I've been doing this for quite a while and uh, it's still working it out as each time, you know as, as each um, problem comes along really and getting through that one and then going on to the next one until it's done. Bizarrely, probably Lord of the Rings, which isn't you know it's not necessarily a, a book that you would imagine on, on a lot of crime crime writers' shelves, but again I read it years ago and. Um, it has, I know people, some people love it and some people hate it, but I, I, it was the story. I was just completely gripped by the story and there was one scene in it where, I, going back to what I was saying earlier about wrong foot in the reader, where I'm sure most people are aware of the story of Lord of the Rings now, but you, you'd think one, one central character has, has been killed. And this is coming towards, you know, about three quarters of the way through the book. And I was, I can remember, I had to put the book down because I just couldn't believe this had happened. Um, and. That was quite instrumental in thinking, OK, you know, producing that sort of response in a, in a reader, that's fantastic. And if you, you can go some way towards, you know, um, reproducing that or, you know, attempting to, you know, to, to follow that sort of example, then even though it's a different genre altogether, then, um, then you know, I, w I wanted to try and do that. So, yeah, I've still got a, a big soft spot for Lord of the Rings. I'm more of a reader than, than a listener, but uh, um, I do listen to them because... I think one good thing about audiobooks, and, and also it, it works in the same way I used to listen to, and still do, radio plays and radio dramas, because it, they work on, on the similar way uh, to actually the, the written word. The pictures still form in your mind. Um, if you see a film, you can have the best special effects, the most expensive special effects you know, possible, but it's still somebody else's vision of it. Whereas if you're listening to something, 
then you conjure the images up in your head, the same as if you're reading. So I think reading and listening are, are, are very, very closely linked. And I think it's a, a very direct process of, of enjoying a book. <laughs>